Just a quick note before we begin with our confession and forgiveness. Um, as this week has unfolded, it has been quite a doozy of a week, especially with when everything that happened on Wednesday on in our capital in Washington, DC. And um, while I'm not preaching today, I did wanna say a few quick things. Um, we are celebrating Epiphany today, which is about three people who listened to a king and went to pay homage to a baby and then went home another way because this king had lied to them and didn't have good intentions and ended up slaughtering innocent babies to protect his own seat. Um, and we'll actually read that reading today. And so we remember that there are earthly kings, good, bad, and ugly, and that we have a heavenly king too. And that we are all entrenched in this, which is why we begin today with confession and forgiveness that white supremacy is real and alive and in our midst. And we confess that as sin. And um, I'd like to point the congregation too to a few things. Our presiding bishop, Bishop Eaton, has um, signed a letter with the National Council of Churches asking for our president's resignation. And that's a big deal. That doesn't happen very often. So I'll put that, the link to the letter in the chat box. Um, and she has signed that along with a lot of other people. And my heart really goes out to our purple churches today, churches in other areas of our country that really have to grapple with this in ways that maybe we, we don't. We've, we've seen this in our own city in the last six months and, um, and it's hard, it's uncomfortable, um, but we're starting to see who this country really is. That, that we have preferred white people for a long time and we lament that and it's our job to keep speaking up and saying how uncomfortable it is and that we want to be better. So um, those are just some, some peanut gallery thoughts from Pastor CJ. <laughs> um, and then also I wanted to share too that as we, we name these women in scripture today, we are also celebrating the fact that in our denomination, um, we have been ordaining women for 50 years, woohoo, that look like me. And for 40 years, we've been ordaining women of color. And for 10 years, we've been ordaining women who like women. So it's, it's been a journey for even our own church. Um, and we remember that the church is constantly asking us to reform and to pray and to ask for the Holy Spirit to come in our midst. So I'll put a few links in our chat box and invite you to prepare your hearts as we do confession and forgiveness together. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who was in the beginning, who makes a dwelling among us, who covers us with justice and mercy. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God of goodness and loving kindness, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have turned away from your invitation to new life. We have turned away from the lowly and downtrodden in your abundant mercy, forgive us our sins, those we know 
and those known only to you. For the sake of the one who came to live among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Hear the good news of peace and salvation. God forgives us all our sins, not through our own work, but through Jesus Christ, made known to all people, with all who come to the manger. Rejoice in this amazing gift of grace. Amen. The grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you, me. Almighty God, you wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and yet more wonderfully restored it. In your grace, let us share the divine life of the one who came to share our humanity, Jesus Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right, everyone, if you want to put yourselves on me on speaker, then you'll be able to see this a little better. So we still got our nativity. The shepherds have left. They're behind my little dust lamp over there. <laughs> But we still got Mary and some animals. We got a goat. And there's this star up here. And today we get to celebrate that the wise men from the east have been watching this strange star in the sky. And they know that it means something special is happening. And they get to hang out with baby Jesus now too. So I'm going to go get them. So here's their fun camel. They got a purple cloth on here. Purple was a sign of royalty for a long time. We've got these three wise ones and they bring strange gifts to this baby. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. If we were meeting in person, I would have you smell some frankincense and myrrh. It's really stinky. Both of them are, are tree resins, incense, perfumes for um, taking care of dead bodies, actually, but they were very expensive. Dying is a stinky process. And um, they were meant for kings, for royalty. And so they brought these kings not really knowing what they would find at this star, but they kind of knew that baby Jesus must have been the special one they were looking for. And so they left him with baby Jesus anyway. But what's a baby going to do with stinky incense? But today we celebrate that um, at the manger scene, we've, we've got all sorts of people, people from all different places, from all this different stations of life. And like I mentioned, they, they hear rumors that King Herod, who sent them and wanted, them, wanted to know what was happening, didn't really want to worship baby Jesus. And so they went home a different way and encouraged Mary and Joseph to do the same. And so they actually became refugees and they left Bethlehem and fled to Egypt for a few years before going back home to Nazareth. So that is our nativity story for today. And now we're going to sing some songs and read some scripture readings about all the people in Jesus's family. The first reading today is the reading of Tamar in Genesis 38. Tamar is the first grandmother listed in Matthew's genealogy. Tamar puts her own honor on the line because of her commitment to justice and social responsibility. In the course of time, the wife of Judah, Shua's daughter, died. When Judah's time of mourning was over, he went up to Timnah to his sheep shearers. He and his friends, friend Hurrah, the Adamlanite. When Tamar was told, your father-in-law is going up to Tima to shear his sheep. She put off her widow's garments, put on a veil, wrapped herself up, 
and sat down at the entrance to Enamon, which is on the road to Timnah. She saw that Shelah was grown up, yet she had not been given to him in marriage. When Judah saw her, he thought her to be a prostitute, for she had covered her face. He went over to her and at the roadside, he went over to her at the roadside and said, Come, let me come in to you. For he did not know that she was his daughter-in-law. She said, What will you give me that you may come in to me? He answered, I will send you a kid from the flock. And she said, Only if you give me a pledge until you send it. He said, What pledge shall I give you? She replied, Your signet and your cord and the staff that, hold, that is in your hand. So he gave them to her and went into her and she conceived by him. Then she got up and went away and taking off her veil, she put on the garments of her widowhood. When Judah sent the kid by his friend, the Adamanite, to recover the pledge from the woman, he could not find her. He asked the townspeople, where is the temple prostitute who is at the Eminem by the wayside? But they said, no prostitute has been here. So he returned to Judah and said, I have not found her. Moreover, the townspeople said, no prostitute has been here. Judah replied, let her keep the things as her own. Otherwise, we will be laughed at. You see, I sent this kid and you could not find her. About three months later, Judah was told your daughter-in-law, Tamar, has played the whore. Moreover, she's pregnant as a result of whoredom. And Judah said, bring her out and let her be burned. As she was being brought out, she sent word to her father-in-law. It was the owner of these who made me pregnant. And she said, take note, please, whose these are, the signet and the cord and the staff. Then Judah acknowledged them and said, she is more in the right than I since I did not give her to my son, Shelah. He did not lie with her again. When the, time came of, when the time of her delivery came, there were twins in her womb. While she was in labor, one put out a hand and the midwife took and bound on his hand a crimson thread saying, this one came out first. But just then he drew back his hand and, he came, and, came up, and out came his brother. And she said, what a breach you have made for yourself. Therefore, he was named Perez. Afterward, his brother came out with the crimson thread on his hand, and he was named Zera. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is about Rahab. It comes from the book of Joshua. Rahab is the second grandma of Jesus's genealogy. She is a resident of Jericho, a city under attack from the Israelites. She aided the Israelites and was faithful to God. She and her household are spared from the destruction of Jericho. Joshua said to the two men who had spied out the land, go into the prostitute's house and bring out the woman out and all who belong to her as you swore to her. So the young men who had been spies went in and brought Rahab out along with her father, her mother, her brothers, and all who belonged to her. They brought all her kindred out and set them outside the camp of Israel. They burned down the city and everything in it, only the silver and gold and the vessels of bronze and iron they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. But Rahab the prostitute with her family and all who belonged to her, Joshua spared. Her family has lived in Israel ever since, for she hid the messengers who Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Let us sing. Thank you. 
reading comes from Ruth. Ruth is the third grandmother of Jesus listed. A Moabite and a widow, she came into the land of Israel with her mother-in-law, Naomi. She works to provide food for them by gleaning. She secures even more stability for them through her budding relationship with Boaz. So Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. When they came together, the Lord made her conceive and she bore a son. Then the woman said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, who has not left you this day without next of kin, and may his name be renowned in Israel. He shall be you, to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is more to you than seven sons, has borne him. Then Naomi took the child and laid him on her bosom. He became his nurse, she be and became his nurse. The woman of the neighborhood gave him a name saying, a son has been born to Naomi. They named him Obed. He became the father of Jesse, the father of David. Now these are the descendants of Perez. Perez became the father of Hezron, Hezron of Ram, Ram of Aminadab, Aminadab of Nashon, Nashon of Salmon, Salmon of Boaz, Boaz of Obed, Obed of Jesse, and Jesse of David. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The fourth reading is about Bathsheba from 2 Samuel. Bathsheba is the fourth and final grandmother of Jesus, though she is not listed by name. In Matthew 1, verse 6, she is identified by the name of her first husband, Uriah. King David plotted and killed Uriah so that he could take Bathsheba. Both David and Bathsheba suffer because of David's sin. The Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bore to David, and it became very ill. David therefore pleaded with God for the child. David fasted and went in and lay all night on the ground. The elders of his house stood beside him, urging him to rise from the ground. But he would not, nor did he eat food with them. On the seventh day, the child died, and the servants of David were afraid to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, while the child was still alive, we spoke to him and he did not listen to us. How then can we tell him the child is dead? He may do himself some harm. But when David saw that his servants were whispering together, he perceived that the child was dead. And David said to his servants, is the child dead? They said, he is dead. Then David rose from the ground, washed, anointed himself and changed his clothes. He went into the house of the Lord and worshiped. He then went to his own house, and when he asked, they set food before him, and he ate. Then his servant said to him, What is this thing that you have done? You fasted and wept for the child while it was alive, but when the child died, you rose and ate food. He said, While the child was still alive, I fasted and wept, for I said, Who knows? The Lord may be gracious to me, and the child may live. But now he is dead. Why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he will not return to me. Then David consoled his wife Bathsheba and went to her and lay with her. And she bore a son, and he named him Solomon. The Lord loved him and sent a message by the prophet Nathan. So he named, he named him Jedidiah because of the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks Thank be to God.
The fifth reading is about Elizabeth found in the Luke, the first chapter, verses five to 25. In the gospel of Luke, Elizabeth is a cousin of Mary. She experiences a great reversal with a miraculous pregnancy. Her story is a forerunner of Mary's, just as her son, John the Baptist, is a forerunner of Jesus. In the days of King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly order of Abijah. His wife was a descendant of Aaron and her name was Elizabeth. Both of them were righteous before God, living blamelessly according to the commandments and regulations of the Lord. But they had no children because Elizabeth was barren and both were getting on in years. Once when he was serving his priest before God, and his section was on duty, he was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and offer incense. Now at the time of the incense offering, the whole assembly of the people was praying outside. Then there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was terrified and fear overwhelmed him. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you will name him John. He will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink. Even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. With the spirit and power of Elijah, he will go before him to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zacharias said to the angel, how will I know that this is so? For I'm an old man and my wife is getting on in years. The angel replied, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. But now, because you do not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time, you will become mute, unable to speak until the day these things occur. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondered at his delay in the sanctuary. When he did come out, he could not speak to them and they realized that he had seen a vision in the sanctuary. He kept motioning to them and remained unable to speak. When his time of service was ended, he went to his home. After those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and for five months she remained in seclusion. She said, this is what the Lord has done for me when he looked favorably on me and took away the disgrace I've endured among my people. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The sixth reading is for Mary. Luke shares the largest portion of the story of Mary, the mother of Jesus. Here we read her encounter with an angel where she learns of her miraculous pregnancy. In the hymn following, we sing Mary's own words to Elizabeth in their encounter in Luke 2. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. 
And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who is said to be barren for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, here I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. seventh reading is about the mothers of the innocents from Matthew chapter 2. The wise men who, are, who seek the newborn king seek him first in Jerusalem. Their inquiry is frightened King Herod, and he acts to preserve his power. Many mothers weep because of his fear. Though Jesus's life is preserved, his family had fled to Egypt. His mother too will weep one day at the death of her son. When Herod saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, he was infuriated, and he sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem who were two years old or under, according to the time that he had learned from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be consoled because they were no more. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The eighth reading is of Anna and Luke, the second chapter. Luke does not provide many details about Anna. We do not know if she had any children of her own. However, she recognizes Jesus as the Son of God and proclaims that redemption has arrived. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Hanal, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to whom all were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We end our, our readings and carols with this blessing from Pastor Jan Richardson. For wise women also came. 
Wise women also came. The fire burned in their wombs long before they saw the flaming star in the sky. They walked in shadows, trusting the path would open under the light of the moon. Wise women also came, seeking no directions, no permission from any king. They came by their own authority, their own desire, their own longing. They came in quiet, spreading no rumors, sparking no fears to lead to innocent slaughter, to their sister Rachel's, Rachel's inconsolable lamentations. Wise women also came, and they brought useful gifts. Water for labor's washing, fire for warm illumination, a blanket for swaddling. Wise women also came, at least three of them, holding Mary in the labor, crying out with her in her birth pangs breathing ancient blessings into her ear. Wise women also came, and they went, as wise women always do, home another, a different way. Let us sing. And for this one, if you want to dance, if you've got a, a noise shaker nearby, by all means, we won't hear you. You're on mute, so feel free to boogie. <laughs> Confessing our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Today, we will also um, lift up in prayer 
Peggy Stevenson, who is in uh, transition into a different living situation. Joining our song, our voices with the song of the angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Night and day, all creation praises you, O God. Strengthen your church across nations, denominations, and traditions. Fill us with wisdom and unify our proclamation of your forgiveness and mercy. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. All creation is holy to you, O God. You cause the earth to bring forth its shoots and gardens to spring up. Protect hibernating animals and frozen lands that wait earnestly for longer days of awakening and growth. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. The nations are upheld by your hand, O God. Cause righteousness and praise to spring forth, inspiring leaders to serve with compassion and integrity. Send your spirit of discernment upon legislature, legislators grappling with complex decisions for the sake of the common good. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Send the spirit of your son into our hearts, O God. Come quickly to hearts that race with fear, hearts that break with grief, and hearts that long for wholeness, especially those suffering from COVID-19. We also pray for Peggy, Amy, John, Marie, Amy, Harlan, Ruth Ann, Diane, Jim, and Minister Sam. Reveal your power to heal and to save. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Adopt us into your family, O God. Bless our elders with the peace and joy of Simeon and Anna. Strengthen those who have retired, those who work in older age, and those in need of income, food, company, or health care. Connect young and old across generations. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Let us depart in peace, O oh God, according to your word. For all your, your saints give us, we give you thanks. Prepare our salvation in the sight of all your witnesses of every time and place. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all our prayers to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Christ's peace be with you always and also, also with you. Please un unmute, share the peace. Here is sign of the peace. Peace, peace be with you. Peace, peace be with you. Peace, peace be with you. you. Peace be with you. All right, back on mute, you go. At this time, we would be passing around the offering plate. Um, we are, have deep thanks for all who continue to mail in your offerings, do the simply giving thing or online. Um, as we do an offering, um, we, uh, David will play something for us. So, metaphorical offering today.
Let us pray. God with us, you came as a baby to a manger. You slept on straw and greeted shepherds. You come again in bread and wine. Remind us how good you are at blessing ordinary things. And then through these gifts, help us bless the lives of others in strength of your holy name. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. In the wonder and mystery of the word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to love the God whom we cannot see. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you and for all people for forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Holy One, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Feel free to unmute if you'd like. Our Father, our Mother, God in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Our as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily dead. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. At this time, we will celebrate the meal together. So come to the table 
where Christ meets you, eat and rejoice and be glad. If you're with others, I invite you to share the meal with one another. If you are in your own Zoom box today, hear these words of promise for you. The body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us eat. Let us pray. God of wonder and Jesus, we behold the light of the world come near. As you have come among us now, send us out in joy, hastening to share the good news of your love. We ask this in the name of Jesus, through the spirit dwelling among us now and forever. Amen. And may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. All right, announcements. So um, I will put those links that I, I promised earlier um, in the chat box after worship is over. Like intern Allison mentioned, um, Peggy is currently at a rehab center. Um, it's the Benedictine Rehab near Augustana downtown. Um, she can't receive visitors, but um, she's got an, I have an address for her and you can give her a call. Um, and she probably won't be able to go back to her, her house, her apartment at Augustana. We'll, probably need to transition to something else, including that our kitty mittens is going to have to find a new home. So um, if you would like to adopt a cat, please let Dennis know, Dennis Wernicke. Um, we also might need some help moving her. So pray for Peggy and all those transitions. Um, it is a new year. So if you need pledge envelopes, we they're ready for you. They're in the church office. Um, you can pick them up. Um, I can also do some contact list drop-offs if you, if you prefer. So just um, call the office to arrange um, a pickup or drop-off. And then um, stick around for virtual coffee hour afterwards. We will have book club today as well. And our annual meeting is coming up on the 24th. So we're going to test out some polling during coffee hour. It'll be fun because um, that will happen via Zoom. So um, please mark your calendars for that. If you would like um, a paper annual report, um, please let the church office know and we will print one off for you and you can either pick it up or we can throw it in the mail, but we're not gonna do a mass mailing for that. It'll be available electronically, hopefully by next Sunday. Um, any questions, any other announcements? I have one. Uh, Pastor Sam resumed worship service at Zion last week. Uh, he came in like a new man. He's under different medication. He's feeling well. He looks great. It was like a totally different person. He's off his uh, oxygen and was feeling great. And a good number of his congregation were in attendance. So uh, Stan, Du, and I both marveled at how well he looked. Uh, so it's good to have him in better health. So That's I great. also have a quick yeah. announcement. The endowment committee is going to be meeting uh, today after the coffee hour at 11.15 a.m. All right. Sounds good. Any other announcements? All right. Well, there's those two links that I mentioned and receive this final blessing. May God, the creator who delights in you, Jesus, the savior who was born for you and the life-giving spirit who shines on you, bless you and keep you in hope and peace. And all God's people said, amen. Let us sing.
Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Please stick around after our postlude.